I don't know what to say. It's not much different, Co. Don't waste your time. No, I mean, I, st I still want to. I, I enjoyed our first playthrough of it. Like, I and it's a survival game. I love survival games. So, I, you know, I, I see. I, I, I want to play Sons of the Forest again. So, yeah. I, if nothing else, we'll play it for a stream and see how we're feeling about it and, and go from there. But a lot of people have also asked me to play Sons of the Forest. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good time to check it out. Yep. Okay. Oh my lord. Reach the first crossing point. First, turn off your windshield wipers. There we go, okay. Uh, car is fully repaired. What's the last thing we did? Um, all this is still repairing. Oh, the rain sounds nice. We got a bunch of tools at about like half health. That's okay. Did we unpack our last run? Looks like we did. Plenty of stuff there. Yeah, looks like we're good to just head out. Back here. Okay. See if you want to research anything. Did I finish fixing the quirks? I don't think so. I do still think we have some quirks. Um. Oh, I'm out of stuff. Yeah, we need we need to do a run. Okay. Co, hope you have time to do an evil run with that sus hair. Oh, nice. Okay. Thank you. I love how comments in the hair have have moved like literally pendulum between you look like a ridiculous clown version of yourself to oh you look pretty good with that hair that looks nice like that's basically my day being told both those back and forth at this point i have no idea i don't know i don't know what's going on um i i have no clue apparently i look like a very good clown um so that's just our life <clears throat> your hair and your shirt match i'll take it I'll work with that uh, right there. Okay. We need to get here. Wow. Looks like a bumpy trip. Let's do it. Uh, boop. little morning drive we need to get some democracy back on the channel as well you know you're, that's not that's not a bad idea some hell divers too could be a lot of fun yeah man that's another game we could throw in the morning stream yeah mech time i know right <clears throat> Right, let's go ahead and grab this energy on the way here. Oh my god, kill your hair? Yes. So so I've been told. So I've been told. Uh oh. Where's my my thing is apparently. Hold on. Um, who did this? Okay. Let's go. Upgrade your battery next time? Good call, I should. Yeah, we have like, we've done like no battery upgrading. Very good call. Are you planning on playing the new QO, uh, POL League? Or PoE League. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But when when is the new PoE League? That depends on time. Uh, let's see. I don't need the wood. And we'll take the other cutter, sure. Colossal Floof. Ah! The 29th? It's a week after DD. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. 
that might be a little tough. I, I think, I, honestly, there's a very good chance I'll still be full-time DD2 after a week. Apparently the game is huge, and I'm planning on doing, like, a pretty thorough run of it. Uh, we also still may be doing, like, Final Fantasy and stuff at that time. Um, in which case... We would, uh, and maybe even Yakuza. So, you know, we'd st afternoon and morning streams may still be taken by those. But yeah. Are you going to play Ronin? I'm going to play Ronin eventually. Yep. That's on the list. the road? Oh my god, I am. What is this road? It's like not even a road. There it is. My lord. We could try to go from here. It's a little further than I would have liked, but you know what? We'll make it work. Since you like adventure games, are we going to try Skyrim? Oh, we've done multiple Skyrim playthroughs on the channel. And we actually have a, a big Elder Scrolls franchise playthrough uh, coming up. Yep, pretty much as soon as we get an ES6 release date, we're going to start figuring that out. Go ahead and get some plasma while we're here. that looking good let's go ahead and grab this and hit the car hmm sounds like you're done with last epoch for a while uh i mean i'm probably done with last epoch for now i mean I, we played that game a ton had a great time with it i i can jump back in at any point so if we ever have any time and we want to you know just jump back in that's super easy to do so i am enjoying my warlock I certainly, I did, certainly didn't stop because I wasn't having fun. I just, I've got so many other things I'm doing right now. No, man, I loved it. I loved Last Epoch. It was, it was great. Put a bunch of time into it, and it was a legit blast. Just a great game. Oh, speaking of which, I got a big box from the Last Epoch guys yesterday. We're going to have to unbox that soon. Maybe this afternoon or tomorrow. Have you ever felt like you've had to rush a game to complete it? I have definitely rushed games to complete them in the past. Yes. Um, funny enough, in those times, I, I generally regretted it. Like, there were definitely times when I rushed a game and I wish I had not rushed it later. So, these days, I don't generally, I try not to rush games, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, you know, cozy Yakuza afternoon Final Fantasies. Like, I don't, I don't want to rush these games. I, I don't care if it takes weeks or months to beat them. I want to take my time with them, and I want to do side stuff, and I don't want to feel rushed, and, um, you know, it's working great right now, and I definitely prefer doing it this way, but... Yeah. You definitely rushed Starfield? Well, I mean, that was a completely different situation. That's not what they're talking about. I don't think. Yeah. That was a, a very, very different situation. Uh, let's go get that last little bit of energy. Yeah, I rushed Starfield because I erroneously thought 
that what people were saying about doing like the real game starts after you beat the game the first time. That's that's what we were told, and it, that turned out to just be wrong. That, that turned out to be a hundred percent inaccurate, and uh, kind of ruined my first playthrough in a lot of ways. Learned a lot of lessons from that too. Last time I am ever going to have journalists tell me how to play a game. Nope. Learned my lesson. And it basically ruined my first Starfield playthrough. Ar arguably my, the entire playthrough. Um, yeah. I got one guide? No, I got many guides. There were lots of people. Lots of people. Like, basically, a few journalists suggested it, and then almost all of them ran with it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was not, not a good move. Not a good move. And for the record, I mean, you can only get so mad at the journalist. The real fault was me for listening to it. That's, that's where the fault lies. It's not them for saying it. It's me for listening to it. So, you know, brag on journos all you want, but that, that wasn't the issue. <laughs> I feel like I rushed the ending of Rogue Trader. It was just such a big game, says Iskavon. Yeah, that, that one's that one's a tough one because it is such a big game. Like, there's one thing. It's one thing to rush a game. It's another thing to have fatigue from a game. And I have definitely encountered that before, too, where it's just like some games are so big where it's just like you're just ready to get to the end of it. You're ready to see the ending. You're ready to move on. There might be other games you want to play at the time or maybe that are coming out soon. You're just like, I want to put a, a period on this sentence and I want to do something else. I think that's just normal though, you know? I think that's that's pretty normal to feel that way for some games, especially for longer ones. That happened to me with the new Final Fantasy game. Oh yeah, with with Rebirth. Yeah, that happened to you with Rebirth. Wow, uh, I I don't get that feeling at all with Rebirth personally. But I mean, you know, it's it's very much a, a personal thing. There's no right general answers for it. All right, let's get this uh, plasma two. Might as well load up on this while we're here. We do very desperately need plasma for many of the upgrades and stuff we're making. So. Somebody earlier said, is that a loot vacuum? Yes, it is. I could just spam E a bunch of times and pick everything up, but I got a loot vacuum, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, funny, I was reading a, a, a Starfield post this morning about people's, now now that it's been out for a while, and that people were talking about their experiences with it and kind of post morteming it a little bit as a consumer. And uh, it's interesting because there was this overwhelming amount of people talking about Starfield that said exactly the way I felt about it. And and kind of reading what some of them, them were saying, like, made me realize that, like, I felt the exact same way. And what that was is, is that when you start playing Starfield, everything's new. Everything's kind of, you know, there's the, you, you start Starfield kind of doe-eyed and, and, you know, innocent and like, oh, it's the next Skyrim from Bethesda. Can't wait to see what they have to offer, right? And you start playing Skyrim, and you build your first ship, and you explore a few planets, and you do an optional dungeon, and it's like, man, this is really cool. This feels good. Kind of like this. Sure, it has problems, but there's obviously a lot here and a lot to do. It's exactly how I felt. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And even some people like me, we play... 30, 40, 50 hours, still having a good time, still seeing new things, doing the companion quests, that's all new stuff. It's kind of cool. But for every Starfield player, I meant Starfield, I'm sorry, we're talking about Starfield. For every Starfield player, there comes a point. There comes a point. And that point happens at different points for different people. But that point is the same for every person. And what that point is, is it's the moment 
the facade drops and you start fundamentally realizing how copy-paste Skyrim is. There comes a point when you realize you've done something for the 10th time, the 15th time, the 30th time. I said Skyrim again, but it's the same thing. Um, you, it, 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 you get to this point where you're like, I've done this 10 times. I've done this 15 times. I've seen that building 20 times. I've done that dungeon on six different planets. Not like a similar dungeon, that dungeon. And I'm just going to, I should just call it Skyrim moving forward. Um, but that happened to me. That absolutely happened to me. NDX says that's with all games. That is absolutely not with all games. Are you joking? Sure, there's some games that have procedural stuff. But when you're talking about like a single player RP, like a giant single player RPG, the idea, you know what the last big single player RPG that used copy paste was, that was terrible? Dragon Age 2. <laughs> That's the last big one that I feel had the, the level of copy pasting that, Star that Starfield does. It's one thing to do procedural generation. It's another thing to do it well. And Starfield does procedurally generation poorly at best. If you're going to do procedural generation, you if you're going to do procedural generation, you need hundreds of variances. You need to make it feel alive. You need to put in tons of work so the player is not seeing the same thing every 30 minutes. And that is not Starfield. That's not Starfield. Starfield, there, there's not enough interesting things. There's not enough PO, points of interest. They built a cool procedural system, but there's not enough toys in the sandbox, and it ruins the whole facade. The whole, like, you're supposed to play the game for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 hours. They want you to do that, but then they don't give you enough things to make a 100-hour playthrough something where you don't see the same thing 30 times. So it's like... You can't, you can't have both, Todd. <laughs> you can't have both. You can't expect people to play your game for 100 hours, but then not give them 100 hours of interesting, fun things to see and do. It just doesn't work. So that's one of the reasons I feel Starfield just kind of, it didn't, it didn't make it. It didn't make it. Like it, it, it was kind of a failure to launch situation. And now you look at it on Steam, and like the, all the, the it's, its most recent review is mostly negative. Its long time is mixed. And it's like, oh, man, that is... There's much time and effort and everything that was put into that game. Like, oh, that, you, you, you can't be happy about that. You can't be happy about that, dude. And the part that really is, is most concerning is it makes me very worried about ES6. Like, I, I think a lot of it's going to be inherently better in ES6 because we're going to be dealing with a giant handcrafted world. They're going to try and do this hollow procedural tomfoolery. Like, there, there's some things about Elder Scrolls Six that get me a little less concerned. But, <laughs> the one thing that's very clear here is that Starfield was not only, like, a technical failure, but in a lot of ways it was a design failure. Like, there were, there were, there were things in, uh-oh. There were things about Starfield that, that just don't work. On a, on a, on a, on, on paper, let alone in the game. They don't work on paper. So I'm really hoping that we're not going to see stuff like that in Elder Scrolls 6. Um, I feel like they kind of need to go back to basics in a lot of ways, if that makes sense. Do you think people are getting tired of the Bethesda formula gameplay-wise? I think that's exactly what's happening. And I think Starfield was an attempt to iterate on that, that that failed, to put it bluntly. I think they tried to take the Elder Scrolls formula and make something a little bit, like, put a spin on it, but their spin didn't work. So, um, and, and then on top of that, not only did their, their did their iteration or innovation not work in, in like, their particular loop, thank you, Dimitri, <clears throat> but then on top of that, they didn't do what they normally do decently, decently. Like, most of the time, at least in, in, in Skyrim and those things, like, the, the, the characters and the world at least felt, like, a little more engaging. But, like, in, in Starfield, 
it just it didn't it didn't fe it didn't have that like classic kind of Bethesda feel. It didn't have that like. And, and I don't know, maybe tied into the procedural stuff and all that, but it just didn't feel the same, man. It didn't feel the same. And I'm hoping they can kind of recapture that a bit for ES6. Most importantly, don't try to, don't make it worse. <laughs> like, just, you know, realize what you're fundamentally good at and innovate on that. Don't, don't take it in different directions that you're not comfortable with and that don't work, if that makes sense, but. Oh, we need to build some more tools. Am I hyped about the Starfield DLC? I am, I am. The thing that I'm looking forward to in the Starfield DLC is not necessarily the DLC itself. What I am looking forward to in the Starfield DLC is to see if they're making any meaningful changes on listening to the loud feedback that players have had about the game. That's, that's what I'm interested about in the Starfield DLC. I wanna see if they're gonna try to listen to their community and actually make the game better in a way the community wants, or if they're going to just lean into what they've been doing and just kind of, you know, go from there. And what do I mean by that? I mean that there's been a huge outcry of people saying, we're not digging this procedural thing. It's totally immersion breaking. We're not super digging it. And don't get me wrong, some people are. More power to you. I'm not saying your opinion's wrong. I'm just saying from what I've seen, and I've looked into it, the overwhelming opinion is, this is not the Bethesda we're used to. This this procedural thing did not work, and because of that, it hasn't been as fun as, as it has been. So, for instance, if the first DLC comes out, and they just add in a bunch of planets that are all procedural, and, you know, a few quest lines and stuff, it's like, man, that's, that's not great. However, if the Starfield DLC comes out, and they take one planet and turn it into a giant skybox or, or Skyrim style sandbox experience where you walk out the, the gate of the planet and all of a sudden like that expansion is just a giant handcrafted open world to explore, then it's like, okay, let's try this. I'm, 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 I'm here for this, I'll try this. Is that a little bit of copium? It's exceptional copium. What I'm, what I'm saying, the chance of what I'm saying happening is like in the single digits. But funny enough, I, I can almost promise you it's what the majority of Starfield players want. You know? So, yeah. Goosenicky says, for heaven's sake, it's just a game. Wait, what are you, what are you talking about, Goosenicky? Did, did I are you talking to someone else on the channel or are you talking to me? Because I don't, I don't know if you've picked up on this yet, but games are life here. <laughs> here. Here in this channel, games are life. That's what we do, it's what we play, it's what we talk about, it's what we watch. It's, it's the wrong place to say something like that. You're talking... You walk into a channel of a guy that plays games for a living talking about games? You've been here since June 26, 2023. And you're going to tell me, for heaven's sakes, it's just a game when I'm talking about video games on a gaming channel. What are you really expecting? Have you been... What, what, what are you even talking about? We're talking about video games. We're talking about what's in them. We're talking about what we want from them. We're talking about... We're, we're talking about games. What do you... Did you just walk into an anime convention and be like, who watches this stuff? Who talk? Why? It's just just cartoons, guys. Why are you dressed like you're from that? It's just cartoons. What are you doing? Okay. Come on, man. Need a little. Need a little social awareness. Wait, who am I talking? To? Am I talking? To, did I just. Did I just tell Twitch chat they need social awareness. What am I thinking? No, but um, yeah, it, it's. We take games very seriously. Seriously here, Boo. We love talking about them. We love chatting about them. We love talking about everything involving them. I, I, I'm I making a game. I fund games. I publish games. Games are kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if, if this isn't the kind of discussion you want to hear, I get you. I understand it. But just keep in mind, it's we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff while we're here. Yeah, that's just kind of how it's all going to work.
if that's not your thing, I totally get it. I totally get it. Games are not for everyone. But, yeah, not, not exactly, I'd say, the proper mindset for the channel if you want to hang out here. <laughs> I want to work on that a little bit. We need a ceiling kit. I hope the ceiling kit isn't like the thing that blows off parts from cars and I don't need to use an entire kit on every fix. But I'm starting to think that might exactly be the case. Hmm. That makes a crowbar drives away from the building he made it for? That's pretty much standard. Yeah. Pretty much standard. Uh, let's see. Alright, give me one second chat. Let's give it a bop. Berlin's Monk says, is Co making a game? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm actually executive producer on a game called Emberville. I've been working on it for over, man, it's been over half a year now. Uh, early Access comes out soon, too. Soon being later this year. Not soon, like, next week. Alright, let's try this real quick. Let me see if this is actually accurate. No. Okay, you do have to use the whole thing. Yeah. How is your game going? Uh, fantastically, Mountain Mama. Yeah, it's going great. Every every week is, uh, it's just, it's awesome. Yeah, I've been having a huge amount of fun with it. It's been crazy seeing everything get developed. Can't wait to play it, which is a good sign. <laughs> I left my car on and just jib-jabbed with y'all until all of my fuel I blame you, chat. This is your fault. This is your fault. Look, look, look what you did. Look what you did. Because I'm good at games, that's right. That's right. So Ko wants to finish Pacific Drive today? It's not, yeah, it's not going very well, is it? Not going very well. Okay. Uh, let's see, do I have to repair anything? Oh. oh, that's fragile, isn't it? Yeah, it's just fragile. That sucks. I wonder if we should even bother repairing fragile stuff. Hmm. Maybe just let it break and then make it new. Uh, headlights a little low. That's okay. All right, let's keep moving. Oh, God. Co looking like... Adam Warlock today? Oh, that's rude. Somebody said your fuel could be leaking. How do I check if my fuel is leaking? Do I, uh... I scan the engine? Oh, look at the tank. It'll say it on the tank itself. Look at the hair. I know, dude. My hair is so ridiculous. Zero of one fuel cap? Wait, what? Can I make that? Bro, how do I make a fuel cap? No kappa? That's not what I asked. You see the Outward 2 trailer this morning? No. Just make a new car. Do they, do they release a second Outward 2 trailer? Or are you talking about the one that, um, that is already out? All right, we're just going to kind of rip through this section. This area is kind of rude. No. What's up with my hair color? Charity, dude. Charity. Big old charity event that we did was honestly one of the best streams I've done on Twitch. It was it was awesome. It was amazing. Huge amount of fun. Uh, 